little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Hot Air Balloon one summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The Oil Beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry. Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger, and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready, said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying, Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out. Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Sunflowers. 
Berry and Dolly planted sunflower seeds in the spring and watered the seeds until little shoots soon appeared. The shoots grew into little plants that grew into big plants. Then buds appeared that opened into lovely yellow flowers in the summer. Hooray! The friends cheered when they saw the lovely flowers. Berry noticed that the flowers pointed one way in the morning and another in the afternoon. Look, Dolly, they're turning their heads. That's because they always turn to face the sun. That's why they're called sunflowers. When the sun went down, the sunflowers hung their heads and went to sleep. All the forest friends were woken the next morning by shouts of panic. Oh dear, what's happened? Our lovely sunflowers! Dolly cried. Who could have done such a terrible thing? Berry wept. Someone has chewed through the stems of our sunflowers. Flutter washed their wounds with fresh dew and Dolly bandaged them all with soft blades of grass. The sunflowers slowly started to smile again. The friends all gathered in Balthazar's house to decide what to do next. What are we going to do? Berry sobbed. Someone needs to stand guard at night. I'll go first, said Dolly bravely. The little ladybird hid quietly behind the bush and kept a close eye on the sunflowers. She didn't have to wait for very long. A hamster soon appeared and started to chew at the stems of the sunflowers. Dolly jumped out from her hiding place and shouted, Shoo! This surprised the hamster and he ran away. He didn't come back again that night. Flutter guarded the sunflowers the next night, and then Balthazar, and then Stanley. Soon it was Berry's turn. The little snail hid quietly behind the bush and waited. He waited and waited until he eventually fell asleep. He wasn't even woken by the sound of the hamster chewing at the sunflower stems. Oh dear, I must have fallen asleep. I didn't guard the sunflowers, Berry sobbed when he saw the sadly sagging sunflowers the following morning. Berry fell asleep. He slept while the hamster chewed the stems again. Why do you all look so sad? asked Dr Owl. Dolly told him what had happened to the sunflowers. I think you should talk to the hamster. Ask him not to hurt the sunflowers, Dr Owl suggested. There he is. He's asleep in the bush, Berry whispered to the others. The noise woke the sleeping hamster. The hamster looked scared of the friends and the friends felt frightened of the hamster. There's no need to be scared of us. We just wanted to ask you not to chew our sunflowers. But then what will I eat? The hamster told them. We'll bring you plenty of apples and carrots to nibble on. Where do you live? The little snail asked. I haven't got a house of my own, the hamster said sadly. You haven't got a house? Balthazar repeated in surprise. Then we'll build you one. Dolly brought apples, Berry brought seeds, Flutter brought raisins, Balthazar brought dandelion leaves and Stanley brought carrots. My new house is really super, the hamster said with a cheery smile. And thank you so much for all the yummy food. The hamster never chewed the sunflower stems again. And they smiled happily at Berry and Dolly and all their friends for the rest of the summer. One sunny summer afternoon, Dolly decided to cook a strawberry cake. She asked Stanley the stag beetle and Balthazar the bee to go and collect wild strawberries in the forest. The two boys set off. Balthazar soon spotted a pebble in the middle of the path and he started to kick it along. 
But Stanley also liked the look of the pebble and he tackled it off Balthazar. That's not fair, Stanley. I found it. I want to kick it down the path. It's my pebble now. Find another pebble to kick. But I found it, so it's mine, Balthazar moaned. There are loads of pebbles. Find another one, Stanley said, trying to close the argument. But Balthazar wouldn't leave it at that. He pushed Stanley out of the way so that he could kick the pebble. The two of them continued to push and shove until they both tumbled down the hill into the babbling brook. Alfonso the Cricket came out of his house to see what all the noise was about. What's going on? he asked. It's all Stanley's fault. He took my pebble. It wasn't your pebble. I was just a better kicker. That's enough of that, Alfonso interrupted. Come inside, get dry, and then tell me all about what started this silly argument. The two boys muttered to themselves as they followed the cricket into his little house. They hung their wet clothes out in the hot sun and sat wrapped in towels while they waited for them to dry. Alfonso gave them both a glass of lemonade and a biscuit. The sun's warm rays soon dried the clothes. Stanley and Balthazar munched sulkily on their biscuits. They told Alfonso all about what had happened and how they had rolled down the hill into the brook. I've got a whole collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Can we have a look? Balthazar enthused. Of course, Alfonso said with a proud smile, and he placed a large box on the table. Where did you find all these lovely pebbles? Stanley asked. Down by the brook. You can collect some too if you like. They filled their baskets with pebbles. They sat sorting them and organising them until it started to get dark. The little stag beetle and the bee boy said goodbye to their cricket friend and started to walk back up the hill. They soon came to Dolly's house. The little ladybird girl shouted angrily out of the window. Where are the strawberries? Oh dear. The strawberries? We forgot the strawberries. Dolly, look at the lovely pebbles we collected with Alfonso. What am I supposed to do with them? Make pebble cakes? I asked for strawberries. But we forgot, Stanley admitted, and he told her the whole long story. Well, I see. Let me have a look at those pebbles. If you didn't bring any strawberries... We should paint something on them. This one looks just like a little house. And this one, I might paint a smiley face on it. That's a super idea. We can invite the others and spend all day painting pebbles. Great. The next morning, Berry the Little Snail Boy arrived at Dolly's house with Flutter the Butterfly, Zephyr the Dragonfly, Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle and Bubble the Baby Beetle. Where is Stanley and Balthazar? Berry asked with a disappointed sigh. Here we are, the stag beetle and the bee boy announced, and they proudly presented Dolly with a big basket of strawberries. Oh, thank you, the little ladybird girl said, and she mixed the cake while the others got to work painting the pebbles. When they had finished, they invited Alfonso to come and see their exhibition. They all look really good. I'll bring my pebbles tomorrow and we can paint them too, the cricket told his friends. When the strawberry cake was ready, they all sat around the table and ate every last crumb. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Flutter goes skiing. On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed foot straps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. 
When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry, and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill and then the hill after that until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you. Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you. Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski? Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted. And he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Puppet Show One sunny summer morning, Berry knocked hard on Dolly's door. It's the Puppet Show today. Let's go and tell Flutter and Eddie too. Berry and Dolly's first stop was at the pretty butterfly's house. Wake up, Flutter. The fleas are going to give a puppet show. It's Snow White. The little friends stopped in front of the potato beetle's house. Eddie, are you coming to see the puppet show? But Eddie didn't open his door. Hurry up, Eddie. We're going to be late. Berry shouted, but there was still no answer. Flutter gently turned the handle and popped her head inside. Are you still in your pyjamas, Eddie? Berry grumbled. Hurry up and get dressed. I'm not going. My tummy's covered in nasty bites. It really itches, Eddie sobbed. 
Let me have a look, Dolly told him. They're not bites. You've got chicken pox, the ladybird girl told her sickly friend. There's no need to be scared. I've had them already, and I had thousands of spots. I'll go and get Dr Owl, Dolly announced. He'll know what to do. Dr Owl soon arrived and took a good look at Eddie. Hmm, it's definitely chicken pox. Chicken pox is contagious, Eddie. I'm afraid you won't be able to go to the puppet show. Contagious? Does that mean Berry, Dolly and Flutter are going to catch my chicken pox? No, don't worry. You can only catch chicken pox once and they all had it last year. You mustn't scratch your spots. There'll be another puppet show, Berry reassured him. Don't be sad. You'll get better soon, Dolly smiled. Berry, Dolly and Flutter said goodbye to the little potato beetle and hurried off to see the puppet show. The puppet show was already set up in the meadow and the puppeteers were five fleas. The curtains soon opened and the puppet show began. They all watched the rest of the puppet show and clapped loudly at the end. The flea puppeteers came out from behind the tent and took a bow. It's such a shame that Eddie couldn't come with us, Dolly said with a sad smile. I'm sure he'd have really liked it. Why don't we put a puppet show on for him? Dolly suddenly suggested. That's a super idea, Dolly, Flutter said. And the three friends were soon all hard at work. Flutter drew dwarves, Dolly drew Snow White and the Prince, and Berry drew the Wicked Queen. Then they cut their drawings out and glued them onto sticks. When they were ready, they all crept under Eddie's window and tapped on the glass. The little potato beetle opened the window and looked out. Let the puppet show begin, Berry announced, and the three friends started the show. Thank you, he said. You're the best friends a beetle could have. Dr Owl came back ten days later and all Eddie's spots had gone. <laughs>